Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we discussed the architecture of the 8086 and its various modes of operation. Today, I am going to be talking about a bus timing diagram and how to interpret the bus timing diagram for a 8086. Before we begin understanding what bus timing diagrams are, we must understand the various parts of a waveform. What you see on the screen is a typical waveform. A waveform of course has a period and an amplitude, this all of us remember. But a waveform also has what is called a top edge, a bottom edge, a rising edge and a falling edge. In addition, the strict definition of amplitude is when the time, what is it, time taken to go from 0 to 80 percent called the rise time and the fall time is the time taken to go from a high to 80 percent of high that is about 20 percent of low. So, you got a rise time and a fall time all of which together define a waveform. So, let us look at how to read a generic waveform. So, this is an example of a clock signal. A clock signal in this case shows a transition of low to high when the clock signal is at high. So, a signal is transitioning from low to high when the clock signal is high. In this example, a signal is transitioning from low to high when the clock signal is low. A third example is a transition from high to low when the on the rising edge of the clock signal. So, you got various forms of transitions that are possible in a waveform and it is important for you as a hardware designer to really design it such that it meets the requirements as mentioned by the manufacturer. In this example what happens is that a state transition occurs when the clock signal is high but the transition could be from a high to a low or a low to a high. That is the meaning of this particular signal. This is typical of address lines and data lines where every time you could have a high or a low on those two kinds of buses. So, let us now look at a sample bus timing diagram of the 8086 operating in the minimum mode. This is your clock signal. Typically for the 8086 every instruction runs across 4 clock signals T1, T2, T3 and T4. In addition you will notice something called TW, TW stands for T weight and in certain operations when the peripheral device is slow it will automatically introduce a weight state such that the processor is forced to wait till the peripheral device becomes ready. So, let us start with understanding what is called the min slash max bar waveform. The min slash max bar tells you whether the processor is operating at minimum mode or maximum mode. In this example, the min slash max bar transition occurs when the clock signal is low and since it is going to stay at high, it implies that the processor is in the minimum mode. If it was operating in the maximum mode, this signal would be at low. Then there is something called IO bar slash M. IO is a input output access, M stands for memory access. In this case, IO bar tells you that this is, is, is really being pulled high. This tells you that it is a memory operation. Again, the stra state transition occurs when the clock signal is low. The third control line is something called read or write and this is really telling you whether you are performing a read or a write operation and along with IO slash M it tells you whether you are performing a read or a write operation on an IO port or a memory device. In this case you are reading because it is a read bar and you are reading a memory device. Now, the read transition occurs along with the falling edge of the clock waveform. All three signals together are typical control signals that you would find in microprocessors. Let us now move on to the top few address lines and in this case the four top four address lines A16, 17, 18 and 19. These address lines in the case of the 8086 are multiplexed with the status lines S0 to S3. And the way it works is in the first clock pulse this set of pins carries address information A16 to A19. 
subsequently for the remaining three clock signals including wait states if any the same pins carry the status information and status information you will understand later on is used to indicate various operational states of the processor. So these are for the top four address lines. In addition you have of course A0 to A15 and that is the bottom set of address lines the bottom 16 bit address lines. In the case of the 8086 this is multiplexed with the D0 to D15 as well the data signals as well. Again the first clock signal the first clock wave indicates A0 to A15 then there is a tri-state a float condition for one clock signal and then subsequently for the remaining two clock signals the same pins carry data information it acts as the data bus. How does this work? When you want to latch the address line because the address lines are going to change their meaning. So you need to, as a designer need to latch the address lines at the appropriate time and the processor is very helpful by giving you something called the ALE signal address latch enable. At the falling edge of the address latch enable pin the processor guarantees that the address bus contains valid address information and it is your responsibility as the designer of the system to latch address information at the falling edge of ALE. Then there is something called the read bar. The processor is now reading information in this case from memory. The processor expects external devices to guarantee information is ready on the data bus for it to read at the rising edge of the read bar signal. It is your responsibility as a designer to ensure that. Then there is something called data enable and the data enable is the period in which data is guaranteed by the processor during a write operation or it is read back during the read operation and external electronics devices like memories and IOs will have to be designed such that it matches these requirements. The last signal in this particular set of waveforms is something called ready. I told you about the T weight clock phase. If the external peripheral device is slower than the processor expects it to be, the ex it is the responsibility of the external peripheral device to pull the ready line low. As soon as you pull the ready line low, the processor enters a wait state and it will continue to be in wait state till the ready line is pulled high. Once the external peripheral device is ready, it will pull the ready line high. The process says, aha, it is now time for me to read information of the data bus. It then enables a data enable signal and it will read data from the memory device at that point in time. This in brief is an explanation of how to read a bus timing diagram. So we spoke about the basics of waveforms. We spoke about how to read as an example the bus timing diagram for the 8086 in minimum mode. In our next video, I am going to be talking about the architecture of the 8086 instruction set and subsequently we will talk about specific instructions that are more complex. I hope this gave you a feel for bus timing diagrams. I would urge you to read up on of course the minimum mode but also equally interesting the maximum mode operations of the 8086 and try and understand its bus timing diagrams. Remember in the maximum mode you are going to connect other processors as well into the system. Till then, thank you.